Welcome to Happenings. I'm Helen Moriarty. On this show, William Cheever Turner talks about art. The artist, a fine art realistic painter, is presently working on painting a series of time-worn rusted vehicles. Bill has worked on automotive restoration for 30 years. He portrays these vehicles as they now look with broken glass and peeling paint. He feels that these discarded machines contributed to the greatness of America. These vehicles have become the low focus of his allegorical narratives, inspired by art history, ancient myths, and folklore. Come with me to listen to William Cheever Turner talk about his art and to see what is happening. Well, anyway, you get an idea of what my work's about. Now this presentation is going to be how I came up with that trickster, why I did it, how I picked that particular body truck, why the bird, and I start out, I go into the studio, look at a blank piece of canvas, start figuring out, do I want to paint a picture or do I want to create art? It's, what's the difference? Art is something that will probably be around, hopefully, in a museum somewhere. Mm -hmm. Collectors. A picture would be just something that somebody will buy, like for a while, and then eventually end up in the trash. So, you've got to think how you want to protect your work. Imagine the realist, realism satisfies a dual urge in the viewer that it meets the viewer's desire for aesthetic quality and appreciation of technical skill. It also provides the opportunity to experience a narrative, character, and concept within the technical skills of the framework. So you're, you're introducing the person not only to your heart, but maybe to a story, and it intrigues them. It, it makes them stay there longer and look at your your piece. The average viewer goes into the museum and you watch them, three seconds they're on to the next one. If they don't understand what you're trying to do, if there's no what they call eye candy, they move on. So you, you want to attract their attention. You just don't want a flower or a mountain that everybody sees, a covered bridge that everybody sees. You want something a little different, something that makes them stay there maybe four seconds, five <laughs> seconds, you know, a little longer than, than uh, the three. So the allegory is a symbolic fictional narrative that conveys a meaning, not an epic set forth in the narrative. So can anybody kind of guess what they think this means? just by the image itself. The skeleton is kind of a giveaway. Death? The yeah, death. Death, yeah, mortality. It's in, in black. The black is a giveaway. The skeleton usually is a momentum mori. When you put a skeleton in the picture, it usually means death. So, all my skeleton pictures on here, so, we all set with that. But anyway, she's looking at herself in the mirror, but death is not too far. She's liking herself now, but death isn't that far away. This is Sorrow. This is American artist, Meta, 1836-1923. Again, you have sorrowful image right there. But what about the leaves? The leaves are acanthus leaves, which also are used in funeral arrangements. So there's death again. So these are little key things. Of course, it helps if you kind of know that symbolism, which has been kind of forgotten through the years because we don't really need it anymore. If we need to know, we have the computer, which we're constantly looking, yeah, looking up. Uh, 
uh, what symbolism just mean, what, what you need to do. In fact, getting ready for the show tonight, I found a whole bunch of new ideas, new art. And just looking up you know, Greek mythology again, trying to touch bases on some of these artists. So, canvases are going to be getting wet next week or so. Now, a lot of this in narratives. This is Matt Whitford. He's a young Norwegian painter studying now in New York. Look at the size of paintings. This is why I went to get large. One thing, it really speaks. It, it commands the present. Look at the artwork that's up here. The large piece is really draws your attention to it. It's, uh, it's something the young artists do. The only thing is, it's hard to transport. <laughs> yeah. uh, the trickster is in two panels. This uh, three fates is uh, three panels. I'm sorry, it's two panels there. Three panels in the other one. I have to take my large truck, throw everything in the back. They get bounced around a lot. Luckily tonight, I took the picture apart. First time it's been apart since we put it together like three years ago. And it came apart hard, but managed to get back together again. So that's a good thing to think about. If you want to do large work, the sky is the limit. Just bolt it together, but remember you have to transport it. You can unbolt it. It's just more work. Allow yourself more time. This is a cloud of pudding. In his hand is a spoon. He's just eating his way out of the pudding. Getting on the tree to get back down on the ground. You follow it through, you got a pig that's already been cooked. There's a knife right here with a slice taken out. It's all cooked, ready to eat. I mean, there's, there's just so much. And believe it or not, I'm, after seeing this, it just, boom, all these visions came into my head of what I want to do with this. So, they were born this way. They were born old, decrepit. They shared one eye. They shared one tooth. They were the garden, guidance gardens of Medusa. So Perseus, and Perseus is kind of represented, that guy right there, and we'll talk about him later. Perseus was hired to slay Medusa. So he had to find the Gardons, sneak uh, information from of where Medusa was and slay her, which you know was by decapitation. What he did was snuck up at night, stole the ride, and would not give it back to him until she gave the whereabouts of where Medusa was. So she was slain. So that one, this one, and that one kept coming up with these images, how other artists did them, uh, ideas maybe. The first one had a lot of green in it. This one has green in it. There was the, the uh, no eye except for this one. And there's not much anything about the tooth. So it was a tooth that big a deal. <laughs> also in here, the rock formation. The other one had a rock formation. So it incorporates some green, rock formation, and of course, the eye. And this was a, I was at the Institute of Art uh, for my master's program. And the dean came to the, my studio and was looking at my work, and I'm at the point where I'm where am I going with this? Uh, when I did the BFA, I just wanted to be a better painter. And when I got into the master program, it's, well, yeah, you want to be a painter, but where do you want your paintings to go? And I don't know. 
So she said, well, you like to tell stories. You like mythology. You like folklore. Put your work into that. So I started thinking about that. I'm a tiny bit Native American, uh, Micmac. So the first thing that came to my mind was Indian folklore. Going through, I found various images. The jokester, you can see the, the playing card in the, in the jokester, uh, various card movements and stuff, but I didn't really like that image. I didn't quite understand where they're going with it. This one intrigued me, that bird, that bird image. So, reading up, the trickster is a raven, could be a fox, could be a rabbit. You remember the Disney cartoon characters, rare rabbit, rare fox. Those are all part of the allegories of this trickster. So I liked this idea of a raven as a trickster. So with that, I started looking at ravens. How am I going to poison this raven? And you're going to see as I progress where I thought I had it perfect, but then it, things happen because of uh, mentors and stuff, but you see. I get very dry mouth, so I have to drink more. Now we get to the vehicle. Okay. Now, I've painted this truck many times. Uh, this view, particularly, this view kind of, but you see all the trucks in the background. And this was up in Hillsborough, New Hampshire. It was a junkyard, but it was called Mr. Kemp's Truck Museum. Because <laughs> if you went into town, there was this junkyard. But he was, he was in the construction business, he and his brother. All these trucks were in his company. He just could not, typical New Englander, can't throw it away. <laughs> Pack it out back and you may want it someday. <laughs> he had 150 somewhat. And any time you went there, there was artists taking pictures, drawing, sketching, painting. Uh, got to know him pretty well. And then one day I went home, somebody called me and said, he just got diagnosed stage four cancer. He died within two weeks, left all these trucks to the town of Hillsboro. They auctioned them off, and in two days, 150 some odd trucks. All the contents of two buildings, years of accumulation were gone. His brother died, his, he died, his mother's still alive. Huh. So, amazing. But anyway, so because of him, we've got all this tremendous artwork hanging around. In fact, over here is a Bulldog Mac before Bulldog Mac came to be. That's in a painting at the Grace uh, Gallery Z called Noble, which is either No Bull or <laughs> Noble. So choose your, choose your pick. So I like this image right here. Not so much this one, because where am I going to put the bird? Uh, how can I make this thing look like, like it's human? But look at this, look at this big nose, look at the eyes, maybe the shoulders, and you get the mouth here. And it's got a I don't know, familiar with these old trucks, the old drivers used to get in, and you had to know how to drive them. And they'd always would say, doesn't she sound great? You know, <laughs> listen to her purr. And that's the kind of people I grew up with. So I could see the character. And I bought an antique tractor once and I told I started it up with my wife and said, now listen, turned it off and it made a little cough at the end. Isn't that great? <laughs> Still it looks at me in the same way, you know. <laughs> but that's us. So I'm kind of honing in on the image. I decided at the time not to include this part, mainly because that's a lot of work painting. 
I just want the bird sitting right here. Why right here? See this up here is superpower. It's red, blue, and it's a white truck. Red, white, blue. Okay. Superpower. There's another right there, but I'm not going to worry about it because it's not going to be the pain, right? So I get an idea how I'm going to crop it. So I always start with a sketch. Basically, you can see where the headlight ended. Up here, I had a lot of negative space. What am I going to do? So there's the finished piece. And there's, a, you can see on the back, there's a lag bolt there, lag bolt there with a wing nut, and a lag bolt there. So it's a purple raven. Everybody says, well, why did you make it blue? Well, if you don't see red ravens, you see black ravens, purple ravens. Purple is, I'm not a big fan of our government, so I don't want to say that. What, whose party was bad? I think it's just so much corruption that they're all bad. So, again, I painted this when the news was on, and I shouldn't have, because they got my juices. <laughs> so, he's, here's the trickster pointing to the superpower, which is no longer. Broken headlight is our out of focus view. We're not seeing what's, what's going on. Uh, so that's what it's basically about. Uh, if it can't get entered into something because it's political, I just say it's a raven on a bird, I mean, on a truck, what's the big deal? So that's it in a nutshell. It's nice. So that black on the headlight is, is a broken glass, is that what that is? Yeah. yeah. All this, all this in here. I love doing headlights. Uh, when I went up, I had a, another one I had done, international neglect. It's an international truck that had been neglected, so mm -hmm. it kind of made sense to call it international neglect. Two broken headlights. A kid had come in and kicked him in. And I think he did that one as well. <laughs> Mr. Kemp saw me out there taking pictures and on the bumper, there's this bumper panel, and the headlight piece over there made a fantastic picture. He comes up, he's crying, oh my God, says, don't take the picture, let me clean it up. He's trying to pick the glass up. Oh, leave it, leave it. Okay. Didn't quite understand. But I thought it made a kind of a powerful statement. I wanted that in there. It also sort of looks like a Canadian maple leaf. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, how are we on time? On time. I, got, I can do another one. We can take a break. We can get some more food. Mm -hmm. We'll do our raffle real quick and then it's only eight, so if you haven't, another. Look at it. It says, well, what's it about? So I was telling her, she says, it doesn't look like it's in a cave. I don't see it in a cave. So I went home and I went to the Dollar Tree and I got the Dollar Tree Raffle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I have to say. Yeah. Put the cave. <laughs> and when I brought it back, nobody's saying, no, it's in the cave. It makes sense. And it added to the mystery. I, yeah, I was intimidated. I was upset. I thought it was done. You know how you, you, you've done the painting, you put it aside, and well, let's go on to the next one. I'll find out, uh, I got another couple of days where I'm working to do all this thing. But I'm glad it was done because it, it really. And it, it sold. It was at a gallery show. Uh, a woman came in to buy a present for her husband, which was a Cadillac in the field. She wanted that for her husband. The husband came in, saw this on the wall, and it's seven, seven foot by 48. That was big. And he wanted it for his summer home. I don't care what home. <laughs> Bought that Cadillac, and then on the way out, saw a pair of condoms that I had painted. It was a pretty picture, I call it. 
one of that too. Three mm -hmm. kings. Nice. That, was, that was a good night. <laughs> <laughs> Learning thing. Nobody knew that dyslexia existed. Uh, so I didn't have the grades to go to art school. So I ended up going into the military. The Vietnam War was raging. So I was either get drafted and go into the army or join the Navy and pick what you want to do. So before that, my interest in art, my mother was a fine artist, portrait painter. I could, I could draw. I fell in love with this guy, Ed Roth, Big Daddy Roth. He was a cartoonist. He did the rat thing. He was upset that Disney, Walt Disney, also from California, Ed Roth was from California. He did the Mickey Mouse. And he was making a fortune. Ed Roth was just as good an artist, illustrator as Disney, but couldn't get a break. So one day on the napkin, he drew his interpretation of Mickey Mouse, <laughs> which is what you see there. And to the car world, the Red Fink was more important than Mickey Mouse. Ed Roth made beautiful cars, sculptures, gorgeous uh, works of art, basically. Some could be in a museum. We have our metallic paints, our pearl paints, our pinstripe paints. A lot of our chrome came from Roth invention. And he's basically unknown. They consider him an illustrator, an outsider artist. And that kind of irked a lot of people, including me, that he would die and not get recognized. Mm -hmm. So I took Perseus out and <laughs> put the rat fink in, which would basically represent me. <laughs> the serpent would be my battle with dyslexia. Perseus was given a bag, which I didn't really want to paint because it didn't mean that much, but that was to put the head of Medusa in. The sandals was so that he could fly out and you know, from the water out to the rocket room and slay this particular beast. The sandals, the wing, became my ability to get an art education at the age of, well, I started at the age of 50. So from there I get my master program. So it was basically the no child left behind. I got diagnosed with this luck here. When you do that, you, it's, they have to cater to you, mm -hmm. kind of. Uh, give you more time to do things. I could learn, I just learn differently. Mm -hmm. I don't have uh, the capability of mem uh, memorization. Long term, short term, there's no connection. So it wasn't that I read backwards or spelled backwards or did things. I just didn't remember which way the letters were. No big deal. You just you learned a little bit. But I taught school. I taught art history. Once they got that situation settled, I wasn't the village idiot. I would just <laughs> learn differently. That's all the big deal. Mm. So this painting emerged from that. Mm. And my art kind of emerges from that. So, I hope you appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thank you very much. For that. Mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to also say you guys are the most impressive group of people. Every time I go to an art event, this place has the most turnout, the most going on. It's just incredible. So I enjoy coming. Any questions, by the way? Okay. Does that cover it all? Thank you so much, William Cheever Turner. It was so interesting to listen to you talk about the ancient myths and how they can relate to our ordinary machines of the day. Mm -hmm.